Cole Kerrigan allegedly exposed Austin from the Ace family, but people are starting to doubt his story. Welcome to the final part of this series on the allegations against the Ace family. If you haven't seen the first two parts, make sure you watch those first before you watch this video in order to understand what's happening. Please do not send any hate to Cole Kerrigan, the Ace family, Atozi, or anyone else involved in this story. This video is simply meant to report on the news and give some insight on the situation. Again, please wait until the end of the video before forming your opinion on what happened. Once more people involved in the story started coming forward, many YouTube creators started doubting Cole's video. Cole posted several tweets defending himself and his video. He wrote, No, I'm not getting sued for extortion, but Austin McBroom and his team will be arrested for My intentions were wrong in the beginning, but I realized what was more important, and that is why my video was uploaded with factual evidence. No amount of money was ever involved. If Austin was really a victim of extortion, why post three different statements about how you're getting your lawyers involved? If you were really a victim, there would be no case to fight? He's scared because I posted facts. Cole also tweeted and deleted screenshots of a conversation between him, Amanda, and Leslie. He wrote, Here's the rest of the conversation he posted that was left out. The police are involved, and I will not be speaking about this anymore. It's not clear who wrote the first message, but based on what it says, it looks like it might be Amanda. The message reads, The rest I knew about. I didn't know 10,000% what was being said or how it going to be worded, but I knew Cole was going to put out a tweet about the same situation. Cole replied, This like isn't the time or place to argue about this. We're all three supposed to be coming together to bring light to the situation, justice for you too, and for all the other girls this happened to, not to start or cause another fight. Leslie, I don't know why you keep bringing the same things up or seem so frustrated, but I am just trying to help you guys. I'm getting absolutely nothing out of this besides millions of hate comments when I post this video just to stick up for y'all. One of the girls replied, Thank you, Cole. The next message is cut off and it isn't entirely clear who sent it, but it's likely that it was sent by Leslie. The message reads, Only thing I asked for was to take the matter seriously, which Cole clearly didn't in the beginning. Cole replied, Leslie, I was only going to maybe get paid off to not post the video, but I'm realizing that that's not important and also not gonna happen, so I'd rather just post a video. If I make anything from it, it won't be much, and I already told Amanda I would split it with you guys because that's not the priority of this. I want you to be comfortable and okay with everything, but I also don't need a bratty attitude and any negativity coming from you because I'm literally just trying to help. Cole later wrote, You guys both available? I'm about to send a video so you can watch it because I'm posting it in a sec. Amanda responded, Yeah, send it. One of the YouTubers who criticized Cole's video was commentary YouTuber Atozi, who called out the Ace family in several past videos. On October 15th, Atozi posted a video titled, Austin McBroom Ended the Ace Family. Cole didn't. In the video, Atozi defended Austin against the allegations and said there needs to be stronger proof. If we've learned from any previous situations, we need 100% proof before we call someone out for any BS allegations. He also said there should have at least been a police report provided. Definitely when it's criminal allegations, there should at least be a police report. And sure, if the police do nothing about it, then you can air it out. But before then, ah, very sketchy about it. Atozi said the text message receipts weren't enough proof that something had happened. When you're accusing someone of We need 100% proof and not just text receipts to call someone what he was accused for. A cheater, yeah, sure, that's pretty much confirmed. But the other one, that's a dangerous, dangerous allegation that has no need to be aired out without a police report. Atozi went through Cole's video and pointed out things that didn't make sense, calling Cole's receipts a smoke show. He also said Keemstar's text reply to Cole wasn't meant to be serious. And I've spent a decent amount of time with Keemstar, you know, since I chased him with a sharp object around the forest for his Dollar in the Woods music video. And one thing he didn't hold back on mentioning or showing was the fact that he's rich. A drama alert makes millions of dollars a year, and no business owner would ever put their business at risk for a fraction of what they make yearly. And he spoke about Cole's previous controversies, implying he's not a reliable source. This is the same guy who claimed that Cameron Dallas was homophobic for throwing water on him when they were literally at a party where everyone was getting water thrown on them. Then he tried to expose Cameron Dallas as being gay. 
He ended the video saying he hoped Cole suffered the consequences of his actions. So in conclusion, Cole, I hope you get repercussions for this, seriously. I'd never think I'd ever defend Austin McBroom, but I mean, like, if you're gonna call out Austin McBroom, you have a long list of everything that we actually have proof of scummy things that he's done, but this is not one of them. While most people in Atozi's comments agreed with his critiques, a few people pointed out why the alleged victims may not have gone to the police. The thing is, most women who get will never report to the police. Why? Because of fear and because nobody believes them. All right, I'm tired of seeing tell the police first. I myself am a victim. It happened to me in 2016. I still to this day struggle to say anything. The person has a family. Also, I am afraid of him and his wife. Not only that, but I am extremely ashamed and I am terrified of my family finding out. So no, it's not that easy. Not only that, but I was a at the time. Going to the police is not a walk in the park. Telling people that are very close to me still don't know. Imagine how hard it is to tell the police. It's unfair to say they aren't serious allegations or it can't be true because they didn't go to the police. Most girls don't. It doesn't make it any less true. While all this was going on, the Ace family continued posting family vlogs on their YouTube channel. In the first video the Ace family posted after Cole's video, Austin and Catherine made a brief statement at the end. Also shout out to the Ace family for always being there for us. On October 25th, Cole went on Instagram Live to address the situation. Cole said people shouldn't believe everything they see. Austin hasn't done anything legally to extort me or for extortion or sue me or put me to jail as you guys are all saying because he only posted those because he was scared and is trying to threaten me and the others around into caving and that's exactly what he did with Leslie and that's why she uploaded this false statement about me and of course you know people are going to believe it and she posted the screenshots not including the ones where I realized that money doesn't matter and I don't give a about that and the importance of all this was to get the truth out. He said he wanted to help his friends. But of course that part wasn't included and I'm just looked at as the bad guy and all the fingers are pointed back on me. Like always when I was literally just trying to do something for my friends. Like yeah I gained some subscribers, whatever, that's not important to me. You can literally take them all away, I wouldn't care. Like I didn't care to make money off the video. Like if I wanted to make money from the video, the video wouldn't have been posted. Like. Does that, like, I don't think people understand that. Like, yes, I had negative intentions in the beginning, and um, unfortunately, that's what people had to see because Leslie was manipulated, but I'm, I've been through this with Jake and Team 10 and lawsuits and yada, 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 and I know the drill, and I know whenever people get scared about the truth coming out, they just attack with threats and false accusations to scare me or whatever and that just wasn't happening in this case. And he said he stands by his story. I just wanted to justify, I don't know, at this point I'm kind of just rambling trying to think of if I hit every point that I wanted to but I'm going to just stick to my craft, my art and keep it moving because whatever, it, it, it's unfortunate whenever crazy like this happens that is actually serious it just dies down in a week and people forget about it but the police are involved so that part of it is getting sorted out right now on november 1st cole uploaded a video titled halloween get ready with me and lawsuit update lol despite lawsuit update being in the title he didn't mention it in the video someone commented i think he forgot to talk about lawsuit update love you cole your attitude is awesome Cole replied, that's how unbothered I am, ha ha ha. That seems to be the end of the situation for now. So what's the big issue? What we know about cases in light of these murky allegations. When stories about unclear allegations come to light, it's important to remember some of the statistics. According to Rain, the largest anti- organization in the United States. There are roughly over 400,000 survivors of every year in America. Every 73 seconds, an American is However, it can be hard to get a lot of reliable data because many are not reported. According to a 2009 study on false reports, very few survivors will report their assault to law enforcement right away. And if they do, it's usually days, weeks, months, or even years after the assault happened. 
There are a lot of reasons why survivors don't report their assault, including shame, fear of consequences, or a history of being According to the Maryland Coalition Against Survivors cited several reasons why they don't report their assault to authorities. They didn't want to get the offender in trouble with the law. They didn't want their family or other people to know. They're afraid of the justice system. They felt the crime wasn't serious enough. They're afraid they don't have enough evidence. But what about false reports? Well, most of the assaults reported to the police are real. Only 2 to 10% of the accusations reported to the police are false. However, there can be elements of a report that are false, but that doesn't mean the assault didn't happen. In the 2009 study on false reports, there are several reasons listed why part of a report may end up being false. Survivors may give untrue or false information out of trauma or disorganization. They may be uncomfortable relaying specific details about what happened. They're afraid they won't be believed, so they may omit certain details that they think undermine their credibility. They want to protect the perpetrator. So, where do we go from here? Michael J. Stern, a former prosecutor who used to work on cases, has shared some lessons he's learned from prosecuting these cases. For starters, his default position is to believe survivors. Making an allegation of is not the type of attention most women want to needlessly bring to themselves, but not all allegations of any crime are real. He spoke about a case he prosecuted where the alleged survivor falsely claimed a encounter with her boyfriend was non-consensual after her boyfriend found out she was seeing another man. However, he explained why people are quick to automatically believe survivors. Historically, women who have been have faced an uphill battle in getting police, prosecutors, and the public to acknowledge the truth of their situation. You can't place a brick wall between a victim and justice and act surprised when it calibrates the push. Overall, he recommended people wait for the facts before making a final judgment. Across the board, people need to make an effort to wait until the facts are in before jumping to a conclusion about whether an allegation rings true. Every allegation must be viewed individually. There are two choices. We can keep up the scorched earth battles over public allegations of or we can make a choice to consider the facts before letting our partisan impulses get the best of us and bring out the worst in us. What can you do if something like this happens to you? If you don't feel safe, consider reaching out to someone you trust for support. Then, call the National Hotline 800 656 4673. You'll be connected to a staff member from a local support service provider in your area who can direct you to a health facility that can support survivors and give you medical care. You can also chat anonymously to a trained staff member who will provide confidential crisis support at hotline.rain.org online. If you do decide to report what happened to the police, don't do anything to change your appearance. It's important that the doctor or nurse you visit can collect as much physical evidence as possible from your body. And, if possible, don't eat, drink, comb your hair, go to the bathroom, or do drugs until after you go to a medical facility. Without a doubt, this is a sensitive situation that needs to be taken seriously. Everything we know about what happened that night came from Cole Kerrigan's video, and that isn't exactly the best way to reveal something so serious. Even if Cole had the best intentions with making his video, the way he presented the story was confusing and hard to follow. When you're talking about something this serious, the information needs to be presented in a clear and concise way. Because of the confusing way the story was presented, there was a lot of misinformation being spread about who did what, and that's simply unacceptable when people are being accused of heinous crimes. Like Michael J. Stern said, it's important to wait for all the facts to come out and to analyze the situation before choosing a side. Most often, the truth is not on one side or another, but somewhere in the middle. What do you think about this story? Let me know in the comments below.